Okay, so today, uh, this session, uh, we'll talk about the BASIL, uh, the functional safety spice, that is a software quality management tool that um, we developed in the context of the ELISA project. And, you know, and especially was, you know, Luigi here is the main uh, contributor and maintainer. Um, who are we? Um, well, myself. I am uh, Gabriele Paoloni. I'm a senior principal software engineer at Red Hat, and I am uh, <coughs> uh, involved in. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I work on functional safety mainly, and uh, I am involved in the uh, in-vehicle operating system project from Red Hat. I also serve as a governing board chairman in the Elisa project. Okay, and. Uh, and Luigi. My yeah, name yeah. is uh, Luigi Pellecchi. I'm a principal uh, software quality engineer at Red Hat, and I'm working on uh, Red Hat in Vehicle OS. And I'm uh, the full stack developer of this tool. So Gabriele is going to um, provide an introduction from a functional safety perspective, and then we will go in the details of the tool, its capabilities, some use cases, and uh, um, stuff like that. So Gab, please. Right. Okay. So, as Luigi said, you know, the first part uh, we'll talk about the challenges in uh, uh, managing quality in uh, open source software. Then we'll, uh, you know, we'll uh, focus on Basel itself. You know, we'll go over its capabilities, some examples. We'll show, you know, we'll present the tool architecture, the current the current roadmap, and then also finally we'll explain how to contribute. Okay, so I guess most of you are familiar with the V model, right? So the V model is what is demanded by most of quality management uh, standard, and uh, the you know the, the main uh, characteristic of the, the V model is that you know it is uh, a development process that is requirement driven. Whereas, how is, you know, how is Linux or how is open source software development driven? Is it requirement based or probably not, right? So, well, as you know, you know, open source is code driven, right? We have maintainers, we have contributors. So there is a proposal, it gets reviewed, hopefully tested sometimes. And you know, and uh, and then it gets uh, merged upstream. So now, effectively, you know, trying to uh, have open source software, you know, compliant with the V model is uh, is a challenge, right? Because indeed, you know, we need to, to reverse engineer uh, the code and to create all the collaterals that are required. And uh, indeed, you know. Uh, a starting point is, uh, you know, uh, having the, the right tools, right? Okay, good. So, and now let's talk about tools. Um, so basically today, um, indeed, if we look at the quality management tools, these are, you know, developed to, to you know, to, to fit within the V model, right? And uh, whereas, you know, the, the tools that are uh, available for upstream uh, projects are tools that are mainly used for uh, continuous integration and continuous development. Because, for example, if we look at Linux, uh, the Linux distributor, you know, they deploy and uh, Linux and they continuously integrate uh, fixes, right? So, and... Uh, and so here, you know, we we need to somehow try to bridge uh, this gap between, you know, uh, the tools that are, you know, between, sorry, between the requirements that, you know, come from the V model and, you know, the natural um, code-driven development of uh, open source software, right? Okay, so... Um, what is Bazel? Um, it is, as I said, it is uh, an open source software quality management tool, and uh, it makes it easy uh, to to manage requirements, test specification, test cases, uh, 
and also it helped to maintain the traceability between all these uh, collaterals. But why? I mean, how, I mean, this is, you know, indeed uh, every standard QMS tool is also able to do that in principle, right? But uh, why Bazel, right? Um, so the first thing is that Bazel supports Git, okay? And Git is the configuration management tool uh, that is used in most of open source uh, software projects. And basically, Bazel, what can, do, what can do is it can sense uh, uh, QMS evidences that are traced between each other, uh, it, it can sense them changing. And as this happen, it will raise a flag to, you know, to trigger an impact analysis effectively. And um, also it is designed to fit uh, a CICD development process by focusing on code and specification first. So basically the, the starting point of Basil is really uh, the, 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 the code itself and the code specification. And then requirements and tests are work items that are linked around code and, and specification, okay. Um, and finally, you know, Basil facilitates uh, open collaboration, why? On one side, because it, uh, it can export uh, the collaterals uh, through the SPDX standard. And also it implements uh, friendly, or I mean, we, we, we try to make it friendly, uh, HTTP uh, API, okay. And uh, so, so in summary, uh, you know, it can help to, to maintain QMS evidences in a, in a context of CI/CD development flow. And now I will leave uh, the stage to, to the main uh, developer and maintainer, so to, to, to the guy who actually did uh, the work, most of the work. Thank and uh, so <coughs> please go ahead, Luigi. Thank you, Rugab. Hi, everyone. So happy to be here today and thanks for being here. Uh, please uh, feel free to interrupt me anytime because uh, we'd like to have uh, some conversation here, so it's not. Uh, uh, a lesson I told. So uh, um, let me <coughs> introduce this is a, um, a software quality management tool. So it is aimed to uh, handle and work with some uh, quality related work items like uh, software requirement, test specification, test cases, and test results. So <coughs> there are a bunch of tools uh, around, uh, also in the open, as uh, uh, we and before at the XM presentation. But why Basil is different is because it was built uh, and developed uh, in collaboration with the functional safety expert. And uh, uh, so creating those um, work items, you can create those work items only in relation to a reference document that can be a, a software specification, a source code, any kind of uh, document that you want to uh, focus on in your uh, analysis, in your test coverage, in uh, your evaluation. So basically it will differ between uh, direct mapping and indirect mapping. From this picture you can see that you can have uh, multiple levels of software requirements and you can nest uh, under requirements uh, test specification, uh, test cases, and uh, under test cases you can have uh, uh, test results because basically is also uh, test execution environment, and uh, later we will see the details. Uh, so, uh, Basil will propose multiple views uh, based on the direct mapping, because there are companies that uh, don't want to deal with requirements at all, just uh, want to focus on uh, test cases, for example. And um, here there is an example of uh, how this tool looks like. So, you on the left side will see the um, source specification, or in this particular case, a piece of uh, Python code. Uh, and uh, on each piece of this uh, document, you can specify a set of uh, work items. Uh, we have a particular work, uh, work item in Basil that is named uh, justification that we use to provide um, uh, completeness of analysis. So we can uh, uh, assign to each piece of the document a meaning, like uh, an assumption of use to talk in uh, functional safety uh, way. And um, um, so um, creating a work item is a meaning 
of uh, specifying two pieces of information. One is uh, for the work item itself. Here we will see an example of requirement. And uh, uh, this is uh, just one piece. And the other piece of information is related to the, the, to the reference document. So you have to specify the section. Uh, tool will help you with uh, some uh, interface. Uh, the offset that is automatically calculated and uh, specification coverage. So you can specify a, a number that uh, will allow you to understand if there is uh, any gap. So this way, uh, this tool will highlight the gap and uh, uh, will simplify a bit the, uh, the contribution, but we will see later the details. So uh, um, as a quality engineer, we usually need to keep track of any evolution because we um, software is in continuous evolution, so we need to be able to understand uh, at a certain point in time you know, the that work item, uh, how it looks like. So, uh, and basically keep track of any changes automatically. And you will see version number is a composition of two elements uh, because uh, well, the first number is related to the work item itself and the second one is related to the mapping. So uh, as Basil support user management, on any changes you will see uh, the user that did the change, the, the date, uh, the list of fields affected and that are proposed in a view uh, that is uh, like that one. It's a modal view that pop up when you request uh, the history of the element. Uh, so Basil also uh, support uh, the reuse. It is a feature applied in you know, all the, those also in vendor tools. Um, and so you can have a software requirement that is used across uh, thousands of software components. And at a certain point you want, uh, for example, to have uh, just one component that uh, diverge from the other. So you can do that in Basil with uh, forking this uh, work item that we keep track in this history about the, the work item that generated it. So, uh, as the software and the specification uh, as well are uh, in continuous evolution, also you, sp you specify the mapping against uh, this piece of the document. Uh, at a certain point, this can change and uh, the link can be broken. So uh, Basil will highlight this uh, situation and will differ from two cases. So we can have two situations. One is the mapping no longer exists at all because uh, this piece of code or this piece in the specification doesn't exist uh, because it's changed completely. Or the, it exists but is in an, another position of the document. So Basil will allow you to uh, beforehand analyze any impact of a, a possible uh, evolution of this document and will help you uh, to understand uh, the impact on the work items and you can automatically fix uh, the one that you name uh, warnings now when just the piece of the, docu the specification is uh, shifted in the document. So uh, it automates a few processes to try to reduce the manual effort. But um, specifying a software component, in Basil you have to specify uh, not the reference document, can in, ge in general can be, as uh, uh, Gabriele said, linked to a Git repository that is uh, remotely. And on doing so, you can point to the head of the repository, imagine uh, a man page, you can point to the head that you will follow the evolution, so you will face uh, some uh, breakage in the mapping. No? Or you can point to a particular commit hash if you know that for version 3 of this software component, I want to focus on that. Commit hash has some uh, uh, limitation in case of the rebase of the Git uh, um, repository, but so uh, putting some policies on those repos repository, we can be quite sure now that uh, that will be an item fixed in the time. So uh, in the last few months, I uh, introduced uh, uh, user management because with Elisa, we uh, are going to, uh, to, to create a public instance of this tool because we want to do up, upstream some analysis, create some requirements for Elisa. And so uh, I introduced the uh, user management uh, with the user rules and uh, user permissions at software component level. So there are three different roles, admin, user, and guest. And uh, there are also the possibility to join this uh, a public instance uh, without an account. In that case, you cannot uh, 
uh, uh, modify the database at all. You just will be able to read the public content. And uh, uh, if you uh, will be registered, if you join an instance, you will be registered as a guest. That means that you will be able to leave comments to, on, uh, on work items. But uh, to be able to, uh, to apply changes, to write to a software component, to create mapping and work items, run tests, stuff like that, you need to be enabled by the uh, software component owner. So he needs to trust you. And so trust is something that we heard a lot during this, uh, this summit. So it's something that Basil uh, is taking in mind uh, during the development. And the admin is able to, uh, to disable account, reset user password, and so change user profile. And uh, so it is able to administrate your account. So um, Basil can be deployed with the Docker container. So the container files are available in the Git repository. Uh, I'm proposing this slide because uh, when you create an instance of Basil, at the very beginning, uh, he will uh, initialize, initialize the database with and create uh, the first admin user. So at that time, you will be able uh, specifying uh, a build argument uh, admin password. You can specify the password of the admin. So that will allow you to, uh, to specify your, your uh, password. So um, user permissions uh, on software component level are read, write, edit, and owner. So that allow you to restrict the access to some software component in case uh, you have a customer that require uh, NDA, for example. So in that particular case, you can allow only people that sign the NDA, the NDA to access uh, such uh, software component. So it, uh, it's born as a collaborative tool. Um, so we want to leverage any one contribution in general. And uh, that's uh, why it born as a, a web application. And uh, also he, uh, it give us the possibility to uh, leave comments on work items. And uh, user can approve, reject work items. Uh, and, uh, can, and the particular thing of this tool is that uh, he simplify a lot the um, and highlight where a gap exists. So you're creating work item, you create a, uh, some information and specifying the specification coverage, you are highlighting um, a gap. That is uh, on the right is uh, uh, reported as a red, uh, red label and the overall, uh, the overall uh, coverage is reported on the left side with the leaves uh, icons. So uh, it also supports notification. You can specify for which uh, software component that you want to be notified. So uh, if a new user joins, if a test run uh, uh, has been requested or completed, if a work item change or uh, anything, anything. So uh, in the last few months, I uh, introduced the, the test environment in Basil. Uh, because a test result is absolutely a work item that we need to, to take in account, creating the trustability matrix uh, uh, for any safety critical project. So the challenge at that time was to be able uh, to let this tool able to interact with any kind of uh, test suite written in any uh, language. And uh, the second challenge was to uh, run this test on any kind of uh, test environment, no, any kind of suite. We name it uh, suit in uh, quality management. So the, um, the solution is uh, a tool, a Python library named uh, TMT, developed at Red Hat. Here you can see some number of this uh, tool. We have more than 2,000 commits and uh, more than 60 active contributors that uh, works on this tool. This tool provides from one side the um, the abstraction layer we need to describe any kind of uh, test suite, but it also is able to describe uh, other uh, things like test plan and the user stories. And from the uh, and how you can do that, you uh, just need to create a, a metadata file in a FMF format that say for flexible metadata format. 
And uh, here you will see an example. So you can specify the test entry point uh, depending on the particular, your, test, your particular test environment and other uh, uh, information and the full list of uh, statements that you can specify is reported in um, the TMT documentation project. Here is uh, uh, um, how the test run uh, view looks like, but uh, the, let me just explain how I solved the second problem, the provisioning one, because the TMT provides also a provisioning uh, system. So uh, it provides it provide a lot of uh, uh, solution, different uh, uh, provisioning system. We just uh, are leveraging two that are container. The default, uh, if you deploy with uh, the container file that are in uh, GitHub is uh, a Fedora container. And uh, um, the second one is connect that will uh, trigger the execution to any uh, machine, remote machine via SSH. So here you can see an example. The first one is uh, via SSH. There is the IP address of the suit, the test result. It is possible to link bug in uh, Basil. And is, yeah, the second one is uh, on the default Fedora container provided by Basil. So Basil will uh, provide to you also an, um, a system under test. So um, TMT in, during the execution will generate uh, a folder structure and some artifacts. Um, one, for example, that is important is this log.txt that gives you information about the test execution and there is a complete trace of the test execution. But um, TMT also, during uh, the execution, provides the access to some folder and uh, it do that uh, uh, via environment variable like that one in the, in the, in the slide, TMT plan data. So if you, in your test, uh, are, uh, you can leverage this variable and you can copy your artifacts to that destination. If you do, if you do that, uh, you can access artifacts from Basil interface. So you can create this requirement, test specification, test cases, run your test cases, see the result, access the artifact. You have uh, the full trustability matrix in place and uh, uh, you can create an account for your certification body to access your instance and say, please look, uh, look at my trustability because I'm ready for uh, submit my, uh, my work, my artifacts. So um, Basil um, is a software quali quality management tool, but uh, in automotive, as per my experience, but also in uh, any uh, embedded company, no, the tool chain is not so easy. It is not uh, enough to have one tool. So the, the idea that uh, is behind uh, uh, no, this uh, thing of a supporting SPDX is to be able to integra integrate uh, this tool in, into a complex tool chain. No? At the moment, <laughs> Basil just supports the export of artifacts of work items in SPDX. But the plan is to fully integrate it uh, uh, going forward. Uh, the other thing is that uh, this tool uh, provides an HTTP API. So any action that you perform on the user interface in reality is done by interacting with an HTTP API. So you can uh, uh, leverage this HTTP API to um, automate any action that you can do manually in Basil. And then we will see an example, uh, the example. <laughs> so uh, the first example that I want to show to you is um, uh, the possibility to, um, this is a, an example of an analysis of a kernel syscall. Uh, in particular, this is a nano slip. And uh, you can see on the right that I created the two requirements and uh, I linked uh, a test case from LTP uh, the Linux test project under a requirement, and um, I was also able to run it. In uh, Basil GitHub, you will see an example of uh, to run a LTP test and to run also glibc, uh, a single test from glibc upstream uh, test suite. So um, the idea that uh, I'd like to propose to LTP is to um, have an instance of this tool and uh, trying to create a relation between uh, existing tests and uh, 
MAM pages. So the discussion started this week, and let's see how it proceeds. Um, this is a, a, instead an example of uh, integration of Basil inside uh, a continuous integration workflow. So on the left, you will see this uh, icon just to uh, simplify. In order to, we are merging some code in our uh, repository. What Basil can do interacting with the API is, for example, uh, list uh, software components affected by the changes because we are linked to some files so we can understand which software component has been affected by the merge request. We can list requirements uh, from uh, the components, test cases, and once we have the list of test cases, we can trigger the execution, wait for uh, the results, and then we can also automatically file bug and link back the bug to, uh, to Basil. And then we can do, if we are calculating the specification coverage with some uh, mathematical function, uh, we can update the specification coverage and then we can do other things outside this workflow like generate a report and uh, uh, enable another stage of, this, uh, of the pipeline. Uh, the last example that I want to show to you is uh, something I demoed uh, months ago to the Zephyr project because uh, they have a different and unique uh, use case where they have uh, uh, requirements in file. So they want to have requirements in file in their Git repository. So I learned by myself that uh, we still can use Basil in this case because we can create a dummy software component uh, and uh, that is linked to the requirements file in the Git repository. That will give us the opportunity to create the requirements in Basil that are linked to this file. So anytime this file will change, we will be notified because we will see a break of this mapping in Basil. And so as Basil is able to reuse our item, we can reuse those requirements across uh, uh, other software components that we need, uh, we really want to, to use for creating you know, our test ability to run our test, to understand test coverage and stuff like that. So anyway, if you have a requirements file, um, it already exists uh, an opportunity to still use this tool for uh, your quality management. Uh, two words around um, the tool architecture. So it's a web application. It uh, consists of two pieces. Uh, that one is uh, the front-end application and uh, the other one is the, uh, the REST API. And uh, uh, a user can interact with both to the front end uh, just from, uh, via browser. At the moment, uh, the only support that is uh, fully supported is Chrome because it uh, uh, is able to really leverage the user interface to simplify the selection of the piece of the specification on top of the one you want to create work items. And uh, uh, the database is um, uh, abstracted using a Python library that is uh, SQL Alchemy. The default persistence is uh, an SQLite tree database, but you can change if your project is so big, you can change and use a, a database server. Uh, it's just a matter of changing a few row in a Python code. So the API is written using Flask API uh, and uh, interact with, so the front end interact with the API via HTTP uh, using uh, exchanging data in JSON format. The front end instead is written in uh, React and is uh, leveraging uh, a framework named uh, Patternfly. Patternfly is a uh, uh, user interface framework developed at Red Hat. It uh, has a, a great attention to accessibility. It's an open source project. And um, it provides a lot of uh, components, layouts, pattern, and also it's fully integrated with Figma that is a tool uh, used by user interface expert to design the user interface. And we did this way, we created the user interface with Figma and it's not my work, it's work from user experience team at Red Hat. And uh, this tool also provides a seed project to give you the opportunity to create a Scratch application uh, um, really quickly. And Basil was created using this said application. Slides anyway are available on uh, GitHub 
uh, that under the ELISA tech. Uh, anyway, feel free to. <laughs> Uh, two words around the roadmap. The most important things, absolutely, is to create a public instance of the tool uh, uh, with ELISA that will uh, show uh, the tool capabilities to anyone that wants to, uh, to reach this, uh, this tool. And we have other ideas in mind, Some, someone really related to functional safety, like baselines, because uh, sometimes we want to, uh, once arrive at the moment that you want to certify, you, know, you need to have the picture of the, uh, all the work items so that will give you the opportunity to to create really a picture of all the work items uh, at a certain point in time and there are other few things so there are uh, um, those things are reported as uh, issues in uh, github and uh, here are two words on how to contribute first of all i can suggest to uh, access the documentation that is available at the link uh, here, Basil the Fusa Spice uh, is hosted by uh, Read the Docs. And uh, that will give you the opportunity to understand how to spin up your local instance of this tool and have some try locally. And you can propose any changes, features, uh, whatever you want. I'd be happy to uh, onboard any request. Uh, and uh, yeah, I already said there are a bunch of issues opened, so it's also a good starting point if you want to contribute to the tool having a look to the issues. Um, last thing is that, uh, yeah, a few days ago I posted on LinkedIn a live demo of this tool that I'm um, trying to send it to the LTP test, Linux test project. So it um, will give you, you know, a live uh, demo of this tool. So if you want to, to, to see it, please go to LinkedIn. And anyway, with Elisa we are going to create a web page dedicated for this tool where we will list also all the videos, all the tutorials, any documentation. So uh, stay tuned for that is uh, coming. Uh, that's all from my side. If you have uh, any question, I'll be happy to. Thank you. Please. I have the microphone here if you have questions. Okay. I saw you have um, Consport Madipu, uh, <coughs> the uh, documents for one uh, software component. Uh, just wondering, that means that it's for one, so have one requirement, you actually can have multiple places, you know, the, the multiple functions, for example, to support yeah, that single let's, function. Let me uh, go back to one example. Yeah, if you see, for example, no, you are creating a software component is a matter of um, specifying your granularity. You can create, for example, let's take the example of uh, a syscall no? that can be a software component. Or uh, uh, you can do the same way at the, at the library level or a subsystem level. You can create your so software component with the granularity that you want. And, uh, uh, once you create uh, a software component, you can specify the reference document. It can be a, a manual, a, a specification, also the source code. So if you have, in this example, there you can see a piece of the man page. You will see just one piece because, uh, because of the slide, but the, the page is, uh, is uh, long as all the man page. So this piece of the man page has been assigned to two requirements. Uh, at the same level, but you can have require multiple requirements without any limitation. You can create the, the nesting that you want. And under each level of requirements, you can create a mapping of uh, test specification, test cases, and uh, justification. Test specification are just uh, uh, a description of a test maneuver in Basil. Uh, so the idea is to leverage some expertise that uh, will give you the opportunity to describe the maneuver that you have to perform, but is not connected to any implementation. The test case instead is uh, the implementation of uh, that specification. I see. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Tony. We have a few minutes if you want to have uh, any questions. Uh, no. How many of, of you are uh, involved in uh, or are working with the uh, software requirements tool? 
I'm assuming. <laughs> All vendors tool, I mean, oh, uh, probably. Okay, and so on. Yeah, and uh, in uh, comparison with the tool that you are using today, that uh, I mean, I imagine that uh, have some. So I don't want to say limitation because no, it's a, but uh, I worked with uh, several uh, vendor tool, and so uh, what I want to say is that basically it's trying to simplify things, put things together. Uh, things that have a great added value for the one that really need to do the, the job. So in the same place, you can uh, um, create the mapping, the traceability, uh, run your test and access artifacts and so. Um, and I think it's a challenge sometimes on a vendor tool that really focus on uh, requirements management. Okay. So if people want to get involved, how do they like, do you meet on a regular basis? Or if they've got questions, they should put something in as an exchange. How do you want to start to build a community? Yeah, <laughs> we, at the moment, we are uh, uh, discussing uh, periodically at uh, the ELISA uh, tool investigation working group. And uh, yeah, that is uh, the, current, uh, the current community. So uh, that can be an opportunity because please get so. Basically, if you're interested, look online to the website, see where the Elisa Tool Meets is going, subscribe to the mail list, and then feel free to show up. Yeah, in the mailing list, we mostly discuss uh, features, uh, or we talk about you know, the deployment on uh, the Elisa server. That is the ongoing discussion. So yeah, that can be an opportunity to be informed about the evolution of this tool. And so, as I said, uh, Using Docker container now is uh, quite simple to spin up uh, an instance, so you can have a try also on your uh, laptop. So the great thing is to have a, a, a common machine where anyone in the company or in the community can access the tool, so we can leverage uh, contribution. And, uh, another thing that I want, to, because I have two minutes, the other thing is that um, uh, why am I asked the, the Linux test project to try to onboard this tool? Because the suggestion from their documentation at the moment is uh, if you want to join and contribute, uh, have a look to the one page, try to understand what is, uh, an, for a syscall, what is the, the, uh, the gap and create a new test. That's great. The only problem I see is that uh, anyone is doing the same analysis and this analysis is anytime is lost. So. If uh, Gabriele tomorrow would want to write a test for NanoSleep, I have to do the same analysis another time. So using a tool like that, you will leverage any one contribution. So if I do the analysis, I can put the analysis uh, in creating the relation and anyone will know that uh, the relation exists and can focus only on the, uh, on the gap. That's not only from Linux test project, that is anyway a great project that we are leveraging a lot in uh, Red Hat. But for uh, any, any test suite. Okay, so thank you all. Thank you. Thanks.